Hey everyone, it's Deja from crochetoverafter.com. Today is the second washcloth learn a stitch project. To, um, I'm going to call this stitch a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet slant stitch because we're putting all three of those together and we're skipping some stitches which is going to make it slant over. So if you have a pattern that uses this type of stitch, this will help you in doing it, but it's also going to teach you to make this cool texture that you can substitute in scarves, blankets, hats, whatever you may want. I'll tell you the stitch multiple so that you can adjust it for your own project. But if you just want to make this washcloth, download the pattern below, grab some medium worsted weight yarn. I'm using 100% cotton and a five millimeter USH hook and we'll get started. Okay, so to begin our stitch pattern, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook and chain 23. So we always yarn over from back to front, turn your hook down and pull through, and then push to your shaft. So we're doing um, chain 23. If you want to extend this pattern, so if you want to make a scarf or a blanket or anything else out of this, what you're going to do is make your foundation chain a multiple of three and then add two to that number. So for example, I'm doing 23, so I'm doing seven times a multiple of three, seven times three, which is 21, and then I'm adding two, so 22, 23. So if you wanted to make this really wide, you could do like 300 foundation chains, which would be super wide. Um, but that would be a multiple of three, and then you would add two, so you do a foundation chain of 302 total. So if you want to change the width of this, you'll do a multiple of three, then add two. So get up to 23, and then we'll start row one. Okay, I've got 23 chains. Now we're going to begin row one instructions, which is to turn and beginning in your second chain from your hook. Skip that first chain. Don't count the loop on your hook as a chain, it's just a loop. We're going to single crochet, so I'm going to put my hook in the back loop. You can do the back loop, front loop, bottom bump, whatever you like. I just like the back loop for speed. And we're going to single crochet. And that's what we're going to do all the way across, is just single crochet in each of our foundation chains. So if you know how to foundation single crochet, you can do that instead. You would do 22 foundation single crochets because we skipped that first chain of our foundation, 23 chains. So this is the first row, nice and easy, just single crochet. So get all the way across to the last chain and then we'll meet up for row 2 where we begin our stitch pattern. Okay. Last single crochet done. Make sure you have 22 because if you are off when you get to the end of your row, you will not have the correct number of stitches to make the right stitch pattern. So because these stitch patterns are width specific, which means you have to make the right amount of chains, otherwise you're going to have like a half stitch at the end which isn't going to work. It's going to mess up the whole pattern. So you have to have 22 right now. So what we're going to do is chain two for the beginning of our row two. It's uh, more for height than anything. Anything It doesn't actually count as a stitch. So we're going to go ahead and use this very first stitch, or the very last stitch we made. So this chain two doesn't take the place of anything. We still are working into this first stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet first. Then we're going to go back in the same stitch and we're going to half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Then we're going to double crochet in that same stitch. So we keep getting the height bigger. So we yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second two. So you can see it went from single to half to double all in the same stitch. It created like this kind of big arch and then we're gonna skip our next two chains so we kind of have three stitches in this one stitch kind of we actually do have three stitches so we need to skip these next two so we're not increasing our rectangle so we skip those two stitches turn it sideways if you need help to see your V's skip those two V's and we're gonna work into the third one 
and we're just going to repeat what we just did. So we're going to single crochet, and you'll see that this double crochet goes all the way across those two stitches, so it all lines up. And single crochet, yarn over, half double crochet, and then double crochet. Go through two and two. Then again, we're skipping two stitches, going into the third. Single crochet, half double crochet, and double. I'm stuck. Hold on a second. Got wrapped around here. There we go. And a double crochet. And that's all we're doing across. Nice and easy. Just skip two. Make sure you're only skipping two. We should end up with some even stitches here. At the end of our row, we should we'll have um, three stitches left after our last little half arch, I guess I'll call it. So continue across to the last three stitches. And on my last half arch, I guess I'm going to call this kind of stitch. And you'll see that we have three stitches left. We have one, two, and three. This one looks kind of funny because it has the beginning of our foundation chain turn, but that is a stitch. So we skip our two like we did before, but this time in this last stitch, all we're going to do is single crochet. So we're not going to do the, the three stitches because if we do three, it's going to fan out onto the side and it's going to create an increase. So you can see that we have a pretty good rectangle going on, even with all of those crazy stitches. So now, we're going to turn our work and begin uh, row three. So the first thing we're going to do is chain two, and then we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did for row two. We're going to start in that very first stitch there, and we're going to single crochet. We're going to half double crochet and double crochet. Then get some slack. Okay, then we're going to skip those next two stitches one, two, and then we're going to work into that third one. So be careful when you're looking at your stitches because they are kind of different looking. If it's, if you're kind of like, oh, this is so small, maybe it's not a stitch, just turn your work sideways because you're going to see that V and know that it's a stitch. So you have one, two, and three. So I go in there, do my single, my half double, and my double. And that's it for this whole washcloth. We're just repeating, one, two, three, we are just repeating this stitch pattern. Single, half, double, skip two stitches, and keep on going. And then you're going to do that single crochet at the very end. So we'll go across again to the last three stitches and finish off again just so you are comfortable and sure of how to finish your row. And then I'll leave you to it to do some more rows and I'll come back probably like halfway through so you can see how it's looking. Okay, I'm on my last one. You'll see that we have three stitches left, so we have one, two, and then we have our turning chain, which is our third and final stitch. So you can see one chain and two chains. So what we'll do is we'll skip these two, and then we're going to work into the turning chain. So you're just going to go under, you can go into that first chain you come to, pull up your loop, and single crochet. So you'll see that we still have a rectangle. So what you can do after each row, look and make sure you still have a rectangle. If it starts looking slanting in or slanting out, you might have added or removed a stitch somewhere. So go back and count your stitches. Counting the front can be a little difficult because they're all different sizes. So if you're not used to what a single crochet looks like from the front or a double, half double or a double, just turn it sideways and count your stitches this way because they all look the same. They're all V's. So count, make sure that you have 22, and then move on from there. If you don't have 22, um, if you're not good at figuring out where your stitches missed, just pull out the row and start over. 
So keep on going, and I'll meet up with you in a little bit, so I'll show you how you can count your rows. We'll get a few more before I start doing that, and we'll look at how it's looking. All right, I actually finished the whole washcloth. It was such an easy stitch that I could just blaze right through it. So I wanted to show you how to count the rows just in case you need help with that. So remember we did that very first row of single crochet, so we have that row one there. And then our three stitches put together kind of create this like half fan. So you can see them leaning one way and then they lean the other way on the next row. So just pick kind of one area and count the leans. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So I did a total of seventeen rows. The gauge that I give will get you to a square, but if you are doing a different gauge or different hook size, the easy way to do a square is just fold your washcloth as you're making it on the diagonal and once they line up, then you know you have a square. So just keep going till you get that triangle and you'll end up with a square when you're done. So that is how you can um, forego trying to get the same gauge that I have. But now we're ready for our border. So for our border, we're going to do a single crochet border. We did this on the last washcloth, if you watched that tutorial, but we did a deep single crochet. So we crocheted probably a good quarter inch to a half inch into our project. And what that did was it helped to hide any gaps that we had along the sides of our project. But since this stitch creates a pretty tight side, you don't have really any holes showing, we're going to go ahead and do a shallow single crochet border. So what that means is on our two sides, so the side where we just finished our last row and our foundation row, we have loops. We're just going to be working in to the top two on this one and one loop on our foundation row. And then on the sides, we're just going to pick up like one loop as we go along. So this first side is going to be the easiest. We're just going to chain one and we're going to single crochet and every stitch across. So just go under both loops and single crochet and go all the way across and then we'll meet up at the last stitch so you can see how to make a turn and how to work down the next side. Okay, I'm in my last two stitches. So I'm gonna do a single crochet in the second to last. And then my last one is that chain two at the beginning of the row. And I'm gonna put three single crochets here and this is going to make the turn so I can start working down the next side. So you just keep going right back into that same stitch and doing three single crochets. And now we're going to work down the side of our work. So we don't have traditional loops to work into, but we do kind of have um, kind of looking loops. So we're gonna work into those evenly. So evenly means try to spread them out as evenly as possible. And I'll go over what happens if you do too many on one side or too little. So as I go, I just kind of try to pick places where it looks like it would be a normal width of a single crochet. You can see I have these little loops and I'm just going under one loop of each of these spots. I'm not pulling a bunch of loops up. I'm just picking one loop at a time and they're pretty tight so they're not creating a big gap here as I work into them. Now you can see that my line is nice and straight as I'm going. I'm not getting a ruffle and I'm not getting a something pulling down. If you start to get kind of a fan or if you're the top of your um, the top of your washcloth starts to point out this way. So as you're working across the side, if you finish it and you see that the ends are pointing up and it's kind of like a cup, that means you put too many stitches into it. So you've got too many single crochets and it's kind of ruffling on you. It's, it's pushing your washcloth apart because there are too many stitches. If you get a side that's pulling down as you're working, then you have too little. It's pulling and it's decreasing and it's pulling your washcloth down. You don't have enough single crochets across. 
So you want to pull those stitches out and then put a few more in. Try to space them as well as you can. But because we have 17 rows, we should have around 17 single crochets on the side. Probably maybe one or two more than 17 because the stitch height is a little bit bigger than a single crochet. Remember, it's kind of it's kind of like the height of a half double because that was kind of the middle stitch that we used. But with the way that this these stitches are leaning, you don't have like a full double crochet height, but it's also not all the way pulled down to a single crochet. So you can see, and I've got a pretty good straight across line here, and I'm almost to the edge. And once I get to the edge again, we're just going to single crochet three times. So I'm doing this very fast, so I would probably go much slower and make sure that my stitches are going in the exact spot that I want them so that I don't have any kind of fan or pulling on my side. So once I hit that last stitch, I'm going to again do three single crochets to make my turn. And then I'm going to start working into these bottom bumps. And you can see they're kind of looped over each other, so they're easy to see. So I'm just going to go into the very first one and single crochet, then the next one. So the bottom and top are always very easy to work into when you do these single crochet borders. So I'm going to work across here, the same thing at the end, I'm going to do three single crochets and work up the side. And then we'll meet up at the very end so I can show you how to join up and we'll be all done. Okay, I'm at my last stitch of the last side of the washcloth. I am now just going to do, this is my very first single crochet here, you can see it inside that stitch. I'm going to put two more in that same stitch to finish my last corner. So I put two more in that same spot, and then I'm going to join my round with a slip stitch in that very first single crochet. So we have that chain one, we're going to skip that chain one and we're just going to work into the first single crochet. So go under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull it through the loop on your hook to slip stitch, and then I'll fasten off. So I usually fasten off by doing a chain and pulling it long, and then I can cut it. And then I pull out the tail, because there's two tails right now, so I just pull the extra one out. And now I'm ready to weave in my ends. So just grab a yarn needle, thread your yarn onto your yarn needle, and start weaving in. So when you fasten off, you usually get kind of like this little bump here from the fasten off. To minimize it, just go into your next, right between the next stitch that you come to, just go right down the center of that, and pull through. And that's going to pull your fasten off down in line with the rest of your washcloth or the rest of your project, whatever it may be. So I'm just going to go through. This is nice tight weave so it's easy to weave in these ends. I can just go in a straight line down one way and then I turn and go up a different way. Just make sure there's a couple spots where it's a little bit bare from where you're um, skipping those stitches. So just pull through look for dense areas of yarn. So just keep on weaving in until you're happy with how much you have and then fasten that off. This is unsheathed. So you should have just two ends unless you had a end of yarn crisis and had to join a new ball in. So I'm going to weave this one in then we're going to be done. We'll check out the finished product. All right, finished weaving in the other end, and now the washcloth is complete. I really like this stitch pattern. It creates a really cool texture, but it's really easy. So this is a very fun, easy project. You can definitely use this in a scarf or a beanie. You just got to get your stitches right. Just remember the multiples that I told you before. But this is it. If you have any questions or any requests for certain stitch patterns that you want to see in a washcloth, let me know below and thank you for watching.